One of the best ways that you can get clients right now if you're already on the gym floor is find someone in the gym who you know is doing something with bad form and then help them. Let's just say for an example, John over there in the corner is doing chest flies and you know, he's just really swinging forward and it's got terrible form. So first of all, it's your duty as a coach to come up to that person and show them a better way to do it. Say, hey John, if you don't know John's name, you'd say, hey, uh, do you mind if I give you a quick hand with this exercise? John would say, absolutely. Who would say no to an expert giving him help? So once John accepts some help, show him a better way to do it. Say, pinch your shoulders back, keep your chest nice and tight and slowly bring it back. That's guaranteed to give him a better contract he would have ever gotten up until this point in his life. So what that instantly does, it builds social proof. So he already has the proof of concept that you know exactly what you're talking about. Once you showed him how to do it, you'd say, how, how does that feel, John? He would say, that, that feels great, thank you so much. Assuming his name is John, you'll say, hey John, so what are the top two or three muscle groups that you're really trying to work on right now? To which you would reply saying, you know, chest, biceps and triceps. So what you do next is say, oh, that's that's amazing. You know, I actually have a client just like, um, he actually reminds me of you, his name is Anthony. And you just, you know, you can either actually use the story of one of your clients, or if you really have to, if you don't morally mind, you can make it up. And you say, hey, look, I actually have a client called Anthony and he's, he's really struggled to activate his chest before. Everything that he did, he just felt in his shoulders. You are doing a few things. One, there's a person just like him already in your client list. So that makes him feel a lot more comfortable. Number two makes him feel even more comfortable because he knows that Anthony used to struggle with the same sort of stuff as he does right now. And you then finish off by saying, Anthony now knows how to activate his muscle groups properly and he's actually you know, gained 10 pounds of muscle in the last six weeks or, or whatever it is. Base it on whatever your prospect looks like. So if John looks like he's overweight, then maybe say Anthony lost 10 pounds of body fat. If your prospect looks skinny, but he looks like he wants to gain muscle, you'd say Anthony has gained 10 pounds of muscle. So you're tailoring your script to each and every single person individually. And that's one of the benefits of having a niche because you don't have to lie about what you're saying because majority of the time you're gonna have the same sort of client base who go through the same sort of struggles and have the same sort of goals. So anyway, once you eventually get his name and you explain that your previous client has struggled with the same thing, but you found a way to help him overcome those struggles, you then say, John, look, I'd actually really love to help you. Uh, I'd love to perhaps take some time next week, 15, maybe 20 minutes to show you one or two exercises that will really help you grow your chest, your triceps and biceps. To which John would never say no to. And if he seemed apprehensive, you can just say, John, no attached i just want to help once john accepts your help you book him in for an appointment ideally no more than three days from the moment of your first interaction so you'd say let's just say this is a monday you say john so are you free on wednesday or thursday because ideally i'd want you to rest for at least 24 hours after this workout when he responds it might sound something like this mm, maybe wednesday or thursday i'm not really too sure what time i finish work to which you then respond okay that's great uh what time do you usually finish work is it around the same sort of time he'll probably say yeah somewhere around there what time is that usually five six yeah six would half an hour give you enough time to get to the gym or would you need to stop by at home he'd say yeah i could probably come straight to the gym. Okay, that's great. So why don't we say 6.30 on Wednesday and I'll book you in straight away. Sound good? Let's take a quick pause. So you did two things there. One, you've guided him through booking in a session with you. And number two, you're going to finish off with sound good. That question alone is going to ignite a response and typically a positive one because if they say no, they're going to make the whole thing weird. And I've never in my last 10 plus years of being in the fitness industry have received a no to the question sound good. Once you get the yes, it's really important that you exchange some contact information. You get his number and his email address. Extra brownie points, send him a quick missed call just so he has your number as well. Now the next two or three days between now and the appointment are going to be super important. And although he may seem like it's a really great idea now, he may have second thoughts on the day or in the lead up to the day. On the day of the first interaction, you text him and say, hey John, really enjoyed uh, catching up with you today. And I just wanted to know you've picked up everything that we spoke about today really well. And I'm really looking forward to our session on Wednesday. At the same time, if you really want to over deliver, you can use that email address that you've gathered off John to send him a free PDF or whatever you already have that will have someone of value and will make you look like you're someone over 40. For me, I've personally used my book, The Ultimate Fat Loss Guide, it took me less than a day to write and it's just the basic principles of how to lose weight. From personal experience, majority of the clients who actually read the book ended up still needing my help, so don't be afraid to give away your best information. On the day of the interaction, send another message saying, hey John, really looking forward to seeing you then. By the way, you're gonna love the exercise that I have planned for you. So you wanna build some level of curiosity as well, make that person excited, perhaps even sign off for someone like, hope you're excited for today's session. So quick recap, one, you would have texted him on that same day and the chances are he would have got home. If he's married or he's with a partner, he would have spoken to that partner about that interaction because he just received a text. Number two, you would have a level of authority by sending him an email with a free valuable thing such as a free weight loss guide or top three recipes or here's the breakfast recipe that you can try tomorrow morning and number three you've texted him in the middle of the day let's just say his appointment with you is at 6 p.m on wednesday you text him around lunchtime which means that he's probably at work which also means that if he's at work at lunchtime he's gonna look at his phone next to his buddies and he'll be like oh i've got a personal training session today oh really where is it at this place really who with this guy this guy's really great he's really helped me out so you may not know this but you're already building a list of potential referrals when the time comes let's fast forward to the appointment once he arrives you want to greet him with 
with a big smile, really good energy, and maybe even a free bottle of water. That's going to give him a level of excitement and reciprocity. The second thing to consider is you want to make sure that you only train the muscles that he said he wants to improve on. And you can summarize this at the very beginning. You'd say, John, just to just to really make sure you wanted to work on your chest, your biceps, and your triceps the most, right? You can say, right. And if he does say that, then you do the best exercises that you know that will only target those muscle fibers. And you're a personal trainer, so I'm not going to teach you your game. Now, providing you've been crystal clear in your communication, gave him the best coaching points that John then feels his muscles for the first time absolutely on fire. That's the perfect time to then say, John, you want to go have a little chat just so I can give you a little overview of what you did today and how you can improve moving forward. You'd say, yes, please, that, that would be great because no one in their right mind would say no. So this is when you want to take John to a quiet area, no distractions, and it's just you and him. In an ideal scenario, you may even have some transformation pictures either on the wall behind you or next to you, or perhaps some printouts or examples ready to go of people that are similar to him that have lost a whole bunch of weight or gained a whole bunch of muscle just for that extra bit of social proof. Now, once you sit down with you and say, John, you did absolutely amazing today, by the way. So how did you find that workout? And then you stop talking and John begins. And this is the part of the consultation where John's going to talk about all the things that he's just enjoyed about the session and how much he felt his muscles and also reestablish in his mind how much you have made an impact on him in a very short space of time. Once he shares how he found his session, you will then say, look, in an ideal world, I'd love for everyone to have the opportunity to train with a personal trainer at all times. But the best thing I can recommend that you do is really think about the exercise selection. So if you really want to work on your chest, just really take the time out to make sure you're doing the right thing. And if you're ever in a place where you feel like you need some extra help, I'd be very happy to do a consultation just like this where you know we'll find out what your goals are what you're struggling with so far and then we can discuss if i can help and if i can't help you then i can refer you to someone who can and what you're doing there is you're taking some of the sales pressure off saying that there may be a chance that you cannot actually help him and he may need someone else and you are comfortable with that as well you don't just want to get the sale and having heard what you just said john might say one of two things one he'd say yeah you know uh i think i'd actually need something like this quite regularly and he might want you to then go into consultation and if number two happens where he says yeah maybe yeah i might consider it at some point you then say absolutely so just out of interest what what, what are your main goals because i can see you training so hard here and you know i just want to make sure that you're doing the right thing to make sure that you get to your goals so then john's going to give you the goal the next thing you do is mm, that's great and how long have you been trying to achieve this goal and don't just say achieve this goal say the actual goal that john just said to you once john tells you for how long you then say do you feel like you've made much progress or has it been a little bit slow he'd say you know yeah you know i'm, I'm trying to do the right thing but listen the reality is if he was making good progress he wouldn't need you in the first place and he wouldn't have accepted a consultation and you wouldn't have picked out his bad form on those exercises in the first place so once john admits that he's kind of struggling with reaching his goals and the stuff that he's doing isn't really quite helping him as much as you potentially would you say look you know john i'd actually be very uh, open to having a conversation with you about me coaching you but before i can even consider taking on as a client i need to know a couple of things so one you build a layer of qualification where he almost has to sell himself to you in a way and he's now going to be curious as to what your criteria for a client is you then say majority of my clients train anyway between two to four times a week at the gym whether it's with me or not can you make those times do you reckon you can train at a minimum of two days a week and if for some wild reason john says no because the truth is he's already been in the gym once when you approached him on the second time when you brought him back. So realistically, he can be there at least twice a week. You'd say, yeah, you know, that's fine. I've, I used to coach people just once a week, but I found because we didn't really see each other enough and there wasn't that level of accountability between us. They didn't reach their goals as fast as the people who trained at least twice a week did. But anyway, let's assume that he did say that he trains at least twice a week. Okay, that's great, John. And then you can pick your own qualified question. So it could be something like, what's your why? Why are you doing this? And this is where they can kind of explain, you know, so that I can watch my kids grow up or I can watch my grandkids grow up and I want to be able to run about with them or I have back pain and I really want to be able to get to the age of six without having to be hunched over for the rest of my life. So asking for their why is a really good question because it gives you some level of emotional anchoring that you can use in future. And again, not in a manipulative way, but in a way where if you know that you can help that person and they're not gonna go out of their way to get in the huge debt to train with you, then it is your duty to make sure that you train that person because the reality is most people need help. And unless they have that layer of accountability with a personal trainer or, or a friend or whoever it is, they're not gonna reach their goals and therefore they're not gonna live as long. And they're simply not gonna be as happy because we all know how happy a fitness makes us. So don't feel bad when you're trying to sell the client because you're doing them a huge favor. Once John passes your qualifying questions, you then go into the rest of your sales script and you then close him as a client. I may even release a video on the sales script itself and handling sales objections. So make sure you have your notifications button just so you can see the video before your competition does. So anyway, that's it. Close your YouTube app, get off social media, get in the gym and execute the plan. You know exactly what to do. You don't need any more information. So it's time to go ahead and execute. By the way, guys, I wish there was someone like me when I was first starting out as a personal trainer on YouTube or any social media platform, because what you've just heard is so valuable and if you do take action, if you do execute on what you've just heard, then you will be successful. There's no question about it. Just get yourself in the gym, find multiple people and keep executing the same pattern until you get better, better interactions, handling objections and all the rest of it. Personal training is an incredible career and it's incredibly rewarding, especially when you see your clients' results come in. You have such a huge impact on people's lives and it is your absolute duty if you're a coach 
and you know you're a good coach. And if you're not a good coach, then become a good coach to get as many clients as possible and change as many lives as possible. And that's going to pay dividends because not only are you going to change that person's life, but everyone's lives around. And if you've been a coach for a long time anyway, you already know this. You already know that your clients would have already impacted those people around them. And when they're at work, they've got their meal prep because you told them what to eat. They're going to be eating that food and the person next to them is going to be like, what's this food? And that's going to trigger a conversation, which is then going to lead the person next to them taking action on their fitness journey as well. And the better coach you are, the more people are going to know about you. The more people are going to want to refer you to their friends and family because they know that by referring you to them, that's going to have a huge impact on their life as well. And it's going to make them look good by referring you and you're going to improve everyone else's life as well. So enjoy. This is such an incredible career. So just have fun with it.